Okay, let's start. So we are very happy to have uh, Pablo Bachelet Alvarez, and he's going to tell us about tensor product on Alcapa and the equivalence of braided monoidal categories. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to speak here. And uh, first, um, uh, just a remark, the original time that I thought I uh, was giving this talk was the day that I uh, got my second dose. And so I was planning to blame all the mistakes uh, to side effects of the vaccine, but I guess I've run out of that excuse. So I hope I don't. Um, well, you know, many side effects manifest themselves uh, in the first two weeks. There you go. So maybe maybe it's still side effects, uh, all the mistakes. Um, okay, but now to the actual content. Um, okay, so um, the main goal, I yeah, I don't think I'll finish in this um, today and in, in two hours, but the goal of I'm hoping two two talks uh, on this topics is going to be to introduce a tensor product on the cap on the uh, category O kappa that was introduced um, last time, and then construct an equivalent of uh, braided monoidal categories of this category O kappa with the tensor product that we will introduce with the um, Lustig quantum group representations of um, type one. Um, and so, right, so the, I'm going to divide um, today's talk or the two talks in three parts. So the first is introducing some um, functor of um, co-invariants, um, which I'll um, introduce in a little bit, but that's basically going to be um, uh, some functor that's going to help us define the, the tensor product. And I will um, explain how the functor uh, I, I will give a description of the tensor product and see how it's related to um, co-invariants. And the final, the longest point, um, which I don't think I'll um, quite finish today, is the construction of the equivalence. Um, and the construction of the equivalence is going to use um, the structures of braided monoidal categories, but um, uh, right, mostly it's just going to be a direct construction of a graded, so this is following the original paper of Kash and Lustig, and it's going to construct a um, graded vector space out of uh, representation in O kappa, and construct uh, um, endomorphisms of this graded um, vector space uh, EI and FI, satisfying the relationships of a quantum group. Um, and once all this is constructed, we'll check that this gives uh, uh, an equivalence. But I will probably skip a lot of details since there's a lot of fiddly checking of relations that I don't think is that uh, enlightening. But OK, let's start with this um, co-invariant um, functor. So um, this co-invariant functor is going to be some, some functor um, that's going to be a, a global, some, some sort of global object in the same way that to define duality um, last uh, last week, we commented that duality is somehow using some sort of global um, properties to define this functor. The same is going to be true for co-invariants and for this tensor product. And so I'm going to um, need to be working on, on P1 uh, on the projective line. And um, uh, I'm going to choose S points, a finite set, S a finite set, a finite, uh, set of points. Um, and associated to this, I'm going to have some um, uh, interesting algorithms that we're going to use. And so let's introduce them uh, and let's introduce the notation. So the first we're going to denote by G odd S. And this is the Lie algebra G tensor with uh, regular functions on P1 away from S. So this is um, some sort of um, global object. This uh, lives on this uh, P1 minus away from these S points. Uh, and a more local object that's going to help um, join this global picture with the local is um, going to be uh, an algebra, a Lie algebra denoted by G kappa S hat. Um, that's going to be some sort of analogous uh, algebra to the G hat that we had before, but now with S uh, different points as opposed to just one. Uh, and so this is the central extension. It's again um, defined as a, a central extension. Um, but now of 
uh, what algebra. So right, as a central extension, it fits in some exact sequence like this. But yeah, the central extension is of S copies of the loop Lie algebra. So this, this here is the more local object just uh, living nearby this S points. Um, and this is the, the global object. And we'll see in a little bit how these two things uh, uh, come together. But uh, right, so this is a central extension. And, and what is, this give, is it given by? What's the central extension given by? So this is given as the quotient of um, the sum of S copies of um, G hat kappa. Now this algebra, this sum of S copies of G hat kappa has an S dimensional um, center now. And so we're just gonna kill uh, part of this uh, big center. Namely, we're gonna kill the, the kernel of the addition map. Sorry, I'm getting smaller. Uh, okay, of the addition map from S copies of the central extension to one um, copy uh, of the central. So we're gonna yeah, qu quotient by the kernel of this addition map uh, um, of the central, like the central, the central subalgebra. of this sum of S copies of G hat cap. And this um, this quotient by this uh, addition map is uh, really uh, we're, we're going to see it later, but it's um, somehow making sure that all the representations at these s different points have the same level. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to mix different levels. We're going to um, right keep that um, constant. Kappa should be constant. Um, okay, and um, uh, the um, third point of this definition is uh, something we'll need to to fit this local and this global um, picture together, which is a coordinate system. So coordinate system at this set S is a family of maps theta S, uh, which are uh, just isomorphisms, uh, theta S is an isomorphism of P1 uh, hat S. So this is the um, um, a formal neighborhood uh, of P1 at S. So yeah, with the, uh, with the formal, the standard formal this. So this is an isomorphism um, of, Yes, of the completion uh, of P1 at S. Uh, well, let's do sentence here. Uh, S uh, with uh, the formal, formal disk. And um, right, this is just, well, um, it's a necessary thing, but really it's just a choice of a local parameter at each point S. So some, some sub function um, that vanishes at S to order uh, one. Um, that's really what um, this choice is about, but it needs to be made. Um, okay, and right, as I said, we wanted this um, coordinate system to relate the local and the global picture. So given a coordinate system, Uh, we get a map of Lie algebras uh, from this algebra G at S. Well, first to just the sum of S uh, loop Lie algebras, which is just given by, you know, in the obvious way, a function G times X, where G is in, uh, G is a function and X is in the Lie algebra. Um, 
maps to the S tuple of, I just use these functions by S to give me some um, power series for this G and multiply by this constant element. Um, but here, the thing that's important is um, that uh, the sum of uh, residues of a differential form uh, on P1 is zero. Um, and so this gives us, because this central extension for one copy is basically computed by computing the residue of some differential form, uh, we get that the map, the map, uh, this map buff, uh, lifts to a map from um, G uh, S to the algebra G hat kappa S. Basically, if we take um, any two elements of this G out S under this map, the commutator is never going to have anything in the central in this central extension copy um, because the sum of the residues is always zero. Um, okay, and now with this uh, map and this property, we're ready to define this co-invariant uh, functor. And so, as I say, we want to uh, um, be given a family of representations. V S in O kappa say um, uh, really pr probably can be done with any um, she had kappa representations of the same level but yes I want to say I want to remark that they're of the same level um, then we get a, uh, a representation of this G kappa S hat um, when we consider the tensor product over S. Um, and we're going to denote this covariant functor is going to be denoted by C for covariance of Vs and theta is, um, and this is uh, as the co-invariance of the uh, induced G out S uh, representation. So in other words, we're taking this Vs, this tensor product of all the Vs, and just quotienting by uh, the action of G ot on this space. And this is going to be this functor, um, this co-invariant functor. And OK, so this is the definition. But now let's see some uh, properties of this. Functor. So first, um, right, this our category uh, O kappa is uh, right generated by these generalized biomodules. So we should uh, try to see what this functor does to generalized biomodules. So if we have some uh, set of generalized biomodules. So here, recall that uh, we denote it by um, ms upper kappa, uh, some a representation ms of the um, group of the uh, power series group. And then we induce from this uh, positive part to the whole um, g hat to get this ms um, kappa. And so with this, right, with these uh, modules, then the co-invariant the co-invariance of this and kappa theta s are going to be given by, uh, well, some co-invariance, but now just of the finite Lie algebra. So basically, we can reduce to, so ms here without the kappa, as I was saying, 
is just the, the finite dimensional um, uh, power series uh, group with uh, entries in the power series representation. So just the representation of the positive part that we're inducing to get the generalized um, biology. And the statement is that to compute the co-invariance, we don't need to go through the um, indu inducing um, procedure. We can uh, just do it directly from these MSs. And um, right, it's given by just the finite uh, co-invariance, like the co-invariance of the action of the finite um, Lie algebra on this um, tensor product. And so- Pablo, uh, yes. two quick questions. So we have a functor which maps to vector spaces, right? Yes. And second question is that uh, this functor is still defined when uh, V sub S is in cardan category. Yes, correct. I mean, yeah, uh, since I'm only going to use it for O kappa, um, yes, I, I made this assumption, but yes, here we can replace O kappa for um, the cash diagnostic category. Yes. Yeah, any other questions? You, can, yeah. you, can you quickly remind me what a co invariant is? So the co invariant is this uh, quotient here. So you just start with some uh, representation of a Lie algebra and quotient. The action of the Lie algebra uh, on this, like just multiplying once by this Lie algebra times the model. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so basically the the, lar the largest trivial quotient or something like that. Um, right. Um, any other questions? Okay. So. Um, Oops. Uh, here is the main um, reason I, I do want these to be in uh, O kappa, though, is that if these collections of representations are in O kappa, then the uh, co invariants are going to be uh, finite dimensional. And, uh, well, I'm not going to prove this Im implication, but it basically follows from, well, maybe. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll prove this part, not this implication. I'll leave it as an exercise. But uh, for the generalized file modules, it's immediate from this um, formula that this is finite dimensional because just the tensor product here is already finite dimensional. Um, and using that and that every uh, representation in O kappa is a quotient of generalized file modules, you can prove um, this fact. But yeah, let me just prove the first. Uh, the first assertion, yeah, maybe let me call it sketch of proof. Since, well, I'm not going to be too careful, but it's not um, that hard. But here, the main input is going to be the following fact. So um, uh, if we have uh, some collection, some family of elements in Laurent power series, then we can uh, construct some function, some function G that's regular away from S such that the difference of these uh, power series uh, minus the um, power series extension of this G around these different points S is in fact not a Laurent power series, but just a regular power series. So has no pole or another way of, um, Saying it is uh, the principal part, so the part that um, involves negative uh, powers of t. If you're giving any um, collection of principal parts, I can find some function g that has that principal part at the corresponding points um, s. And so with this um, property and the fact that, if you recall, uh, for some generalized uh, VAM module, we have a, uh, uh, you know, uh, a clear, well, yeah, we know uh, what this is, is spanned by, namely, it's spanned by um, uh, vectors of the form uh, t minus k1 up to t minus kr xr for um, ki, ki some uh, positive integers and xi some elements in the Lie algebra times m some element in M. And so uh, by induction, 
by induction first on the length of uh, things here and then also on s basically what we can do is uh, we can use some function g say that is um, regular on every point except one and at that point has exactly the uh, principal part given by t minus uh, k1 and then we can uh, see that this in the co-invariant this element is going to be the same as um, one element with uh, one fewer element uh, one one fewer um, uh, uh, multiple, yeah, one fewer element here in the product. Um, and so we can use this to inductively induct on the number of elements here in the product and the number of points to uh, um, finally reduce, whoops, and see that by induction, uh, the tensor product of just the finite part uh, or the positive part subjects on the co-invariance. And then, um, so this is already the finite dimensionality, but um, to see then that um, the quotient is given by uh, um, exactly what I uh, predicted uh, before is exactly, the kernel is given exactly by this. Um, the thing that we need to note is that if G a uh, regular function away from S um, has no poles because if it had any poles and we multiply by elements here, it's already going to leave this uh, subpart. It's going to get some um, product products like this. So if it has no poles on P1, then it is constant. And yeah, the only possible poles are on S. So if it has no um, poles on S, then it's constant. And so, uh, so the um, uh, finite subalgebra of the constants included in this G on S is the only part that preserves this uh, tensor product. And so that's the part remaining that we still need to quotient. And so right, the result follows. Um, okay, uh, any questions about this before I move on to defining the tensor product? Okay, so, um, okay, so then the second part is defining this um, tensor product. Uh, I'm going to right, denote it by tensor with a dot on top just to differentiate it with the normal, um, with the usual tensor product of vector spaces uh, or of Lie algebras or whatever. Um, so this is a tensor product on O kappa. Right. And um, so, yeah, so first let me begin by saying, how is this related to the co-invariance that we've just uh, defined? So we're gonna define a tensor product on uh, O kappa such that uh, the following isomorphism satisfied that the maps from some um, element in O kappa X to the dual of the tensor product um, is given by these co-invariants of X, V1, and V2. Well, really the dual of this you know, co-invariants, but okay, that's fine. Um, and let me just um, make a couple of, of comments. So um, th this co-invariance here, um, you know, depend on these points, you know, dep depend on the choice of um, three points for X, uh, V1 and V2. And so this, uh, right, what we're gonna do is just fix one point for um, X, say we're gonna fix infinity, 
but then V1 and V2 still depend on two points on A1. Um, and um, as these two points vary, this function, um, this uh, functor C varies, but somehow locally constantly. It's going to give us some uh, local system. And so the um, tensor product is not is going to depend on these two points. And so um, as we move around these points, what we're going to discover is the braiding on this um, category. And then I'll yeah, say a bit more, even though not uh, too many details, but I'll say something um, more. But right, so I'm, yeah, so this is this is the goal. And then, uh, but I'm going to define this uh, tensor product uh, pretty explicitly and then check that this uh, equation is satis satisfied. So in order to go about doing this, I need to introduce a few more um, uh, algebras and a few more uh, notations. So um, again, we're still given the finite set S and we're still given a set of uh, coordinate systems. Um, and right, because here in this uh, um, tensor product here definition, there's somehow a different point, like X is playing a different role than V1 and V2 in, well, at least on the um, left-hand side, uh, we're going to fix also uh, a point S0 in the set S that's going to be where X uh, lives. And then the other points are we're gonna, where the V1 VIs are going to live, that we're going to compute the tensor product of. Um, OK, and so uh, the first is uh, gamma, which is a, a, a global object again. And this is a central extension of our algebra G out S. Um, and uh, this is a central extension that uses this S, this S0, this mark point S0. So it uses the residue um, at the marked point at the point S0 in S. So in other words, the uh, commutator of two elements here, G and F, are functions on P1 uh, away from S and X and Y are elements of the Lie algebra. This is given by the usual part. So just on um, the part before um, adding a central extension and the central extension is given by the residue at S0 of FDG times kappa X, Y. Some element one. Um, okay, so there's this. This is um, still a um, global object, but uh, right now with some interesting central extension. And let me just say so if you just choose the points zero and infinity, uh, this gamma here is the same as the um, algebra that we denoted by G tilde S. Um, so this is, this is some version uh, of G tilde S which again, it was this global object that we needed to define the dual, uh, um, the duality in this um, category. But now, instead of just having two points, you can have uh, many more points. And yes, at least you need three in order to define this tensor product. Um, OK. So this is the first uh, point. And then the uh, next one is that there is a Lie algebra map from this gamma to G hat kappa of S minus S zero. Um, again, that, you know, the, this special S zero needs to be taken into account. And this is the same map, uh, right? Uh, as I said, this gamma before was, uh, um, if you just have two points, is the same as G tilde. And this is the uh, map from G tilde to the usual G hat uh, in that setting. So this is just generalizing, again, something that we have seen before. 
Um, and uh, right, what it what it does is it well let me uh, well yeah the the the, the part of g um, the the part from g out s is just defined uh, the same as before using these coordinate systems. But let me just say one uh, is going to be sent to minus one. And this here is because um, uh, right using uh, that the sum uh, the sum of residues of all residues is zero. We can see that the residue at s zero is the same as minus the sum of all residues away from s zero, which is what's what this computes. Um, and so this is where this minus comes from. Uh, the residue at S0 is the same as minus the sum of all the others. Um, okay. And then uh, finally, uh, C is that if we have now a collection of representations uh, away from this mark point S0, so for each S but not the mark point, uh, a family. Yeah, let's let let's say in OK again, but in O kappa, um, but you know, um, and again, I want to remark of the same level. Um, then uh, we get uh, an a representation a g at kappa s minus s zero representation, you know, uh, uh, tensor, the same as before, the tensor product of all of these things, and hence an induced, and thus an induced gamma representation. Um, okay. And uh, right, and uh, let me just say also, I guess that uh, not only can we construct given S minus S zero representations, a, a, gamma, a gamma module, but also if we have just a representation at S zero, a G, well, let me say again, even though we could do it on the customistic category, but um, right, uh, we get, a gamma uh, representation uh, using, you know, using just the coordinate system at S zero. So um, mapping the the regular uh, function away from S to its power series around S zero. Um, okay. So are this these definitions of these algebras clear? Sorry, can you go back for a sec to see? Of I just course. That. What part? Anything I, I literally just like was writing it down and sorry, it gone away. No, no worries. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions about this? I guess you must have described the co-cycle kappa. Could you remind what it was? So, uh, right. Uh, Kappa here is uh, the uh, some some inner product, which I guess uh, was fixed uh, to be, uh, you know, so that the critical level corresponds to zero or something like it's shifted by the critical level, if I recall correctly from Jin Cheng's uh, talk. But right, the the co cycle here is defined by this residue of like in in all these places is defined by some sort of residue of f times dg of the um, differential form f times dg, f and g are the corresponding functions. How much of eternus is there Sorry. in the choice of kappa? How much of eternus is there in the choice of kappa? So if it's uh, if it's uh, uh, simple, if the Lie algebra is simple, there's like the only choice is up the scalar. There's a one-dimensional uh, extension. So it. it in general, if you're a semi-simple algebra, then the choice is the dimension, like the the dimension is the number of simple 
summons of this Lie algebra. It's independent of geometry of S. Uh, oh, you mean on, on the global uh, pattern? No, yes. on the, I mean on the global, well, on the global object, uh, that's a good question I haven't thought. Of. I mean, in the local, in the local object, really what we're taking is a sum of, um, you know, uh, S copies of G. And so the total amount of central extensions is the dimension, like the number of, F, like the dimension is just the size of S. Yes, yes. We, we know how we, usual a fine algebra works. Right, exactly. But the, the number of extent, uh, if there's more non-trivial extension of this global object, I'm not sure. This, I don't know. Sorry. But yeah, we're just using the ones that come from lo the local picture anyway. Like the, we just want this this global picture is just in order to be compatible with the local. Like we're just starting with local objects and going to global in order to go back to local eventually. Um, so yeah, it's just some um, middle step that's necessary. Any other questions? Uh, when defining the tensor product for x, I mean, x, v1, and v2, you said that we need at least uh, three points. So we cannot do it uh, like on one point. I mean, you know, if, if we're trying to define some uh, tensor product v, of v1 and v2 that satisfies this condition, I mean, I guess we can define the tensor product of just one object with nothing, but uh, not surprised there, you don't do anything. <laughs> If you tensor just one object with nothing else, it remains the same. So the only interesting thing is when you start tensoring at least two things with each other. And uh, right, you need you need the two points for the two uh, tensor, uh, like the, the elements that you're going to tensor. And then you need this auxiliary point uh, for the test object X. So that's why you need three. Uh, yeah, three points. But that's, yeah, that's just, I don't know. Maybe it's a cryptic remark, but yes. Thank you. Is the, uh, forgot what the name is, associative structure clear in this definition? Um, well, we can, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll define, in fact, not just uh, a tensor product of two things, but a tensor product of any collection of uh, uh, things by, right, satisfying you know, that satisfies the same kind of um, equality here, um, but, you know, uh, right, the tensor product of many things um, is, corresponds to the co-invariance of X with those many things at the different points, um, right? And so associativity is gonna follow from the fact that, right, we can um, say that any order um, corresponds to this one step construction of the tensor product of many things, um, but I won't check this. Any other questions? Okay. Well, uh, let me assume there's no other questions and then I'm gonna proceed, whoops, proceed to the construction of this tensor product. Well, Whoops. Is yeah. it clear? Is it clear that one tensor v is v? I, I oh, with the identity? Uh, no, I guess that's the uh, well. Maybe it is clear. Yeah, it, it is clear in this co-invariant. Uh, well, uh -huh. maybe maybe let, let's let's just do it for uh, three uh, uh, um, generalized bound modules. Uh, oh, okay, for, okay. Yeah, yeah, for three generalized bound modules, we know that it reduces to this. Uh, wherever it is, to this computation here. And, you know, if you tensor here a trivial module, you're not going to change anything. So this uh, co-invariance here are going to remain the same. I get, yeah, if I, so it's, it's clear that the, the um, val module corresponding to the trivial module is going to be the unit in this um, category. But again, that's something that I'm not going to carefully check, although this is basically the idea. And in fact, it's a proof at the generic kappa, but it requires 
some more stuff in general. Okay, any more questions? Okay, so, um, right, so I'm gonna right, um, construct this tensor product, and right, as I say, I'm gonna construct the tensor product of many uh, factors in general. Um, you know, we have this S, as I've said, um, which is just some set of finite points with one marked point S0. And um, right, we're gonna first construct uh, some very infinite dimensional thing, namely the on all the linear maps on right the li the linear dual of the tensor over the set S minus S zero. Um, you know this uh, inherits a gamma action because this um, tensor product had a gamma action, as I explained. A little bit ago, so the dual has a um, also a gamma action, and right, we're gonna um, basically try to define um, the tensor product, or really the dual of the tensor product, as some sub module of this. Um, right, and right to define this sub module, I need to define some sub some uh, ideal or something like this, yeah, of, of uh, the enveloping algebra of gamma, uh, namely it's uh, spanned, uh, spanned by uh, G1, maybe sub, so sub, uh, set spanned by G1 X1 times G N X N, where, um, the uh, expansion of G around S zero of all these GIs is in T C. So this is some sort of global analog of these um, 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 QNs that were defined in the previous um, talks. So yeah, and here of course X I is just in G. Um, and we're gonna define some uh, vector subspaces C K. So maybe well, this is a K, not a kappa. Uh, of Z, uh, the space of theta in Z such that G K kills um, this phi. Um, right. So in in other words, and uh, and then W is going to be just the union of all these ZKs. So it's the set of all functions that are killed by some GK. Um, right. And uh, right. And the property that we, uh, um, right, and this is some, uh, yeah, well, yeah, let me just say, this is the, the definition and we can, um, Construct, uh, we construct a G hat kappa action on this um, space, and right, basically, uh, you know, the, this the 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 fact that we are uh, forcing these G case to act by zero is going to tell us that uh, the. Uh, Right, the the positive part of G kappa acts locally, uh, uh, no potently, and so extends to a G kappa hat action. That's basically the um, idea. And yeah, just for concreteness, for f x an element in G hat kappa again f some power series x an element in the Lie algebra, uh, and z some element in a particular subset of um, W, we can choose uh, function G 
in P1 minus S that approximates F up to order N. So if we um, take the difference of um, F with the power series expansion of G, this lies in Tn times Ct. Um, and then we can define uh, Let me say it here. Define uh, fx times the element z as just gx times the element z. And this is independent. Independent of the choice of g. Uh, Right, basically, because any choice of G just differs by something um, in Tn times Ct, which uh, hence is going to give us some element of uh, Gn. And we know that Gn acts on Z by zero um, by the choice that we have given. Um, and then uh, also. Can I before you, before you yes. turn the page, you have a definition of G capital N. Uh, and in. Yes. In your definition, where is capital like what what is capital N doing? Uh, the number of factors N is here. Oh, that's a product. I see. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thanks. Um, okay. Right. Um so it yeah, it, it, it's just an analogous definition of QN um, before just for this global algebra gamma. Um, right, thanks. Um, okay, and then, yeah, just uh, to check that, uh, in fact, uh, for any um, um, G in T minus K, CT, that this preserves the subalgebra W, uh, we just note that the product of G X uh, times C is then an element of Z N plus K. So this, this element might not be killed by G N, but it will be killed by G N plus K. And so, um, right, so this, this action uh, preserves W. Um, okay, and so we're just gonna define then uh, the tensor product, yeah, this dot tensor product, of S um, away from this mark point S zero as the dual of this um, W representation. Um, yes. So is it clear that double uh, lies in the subcategory where uh, the other two is defined? Uh, if it um, Yes, maybe this needs some checking. So, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I forgot to check this, so I'm not sure, but I'm What's sure. What's the question again? Uh, whether this uh, W, that, the way that we've defined, it's clear that the duality is defined on this W. Um, again, we can restrict the BS to be an O kappa. So probably can reduce the generalized file modules somehow. And uh, can you tell the definition? Sorry. Okay, so. Right, so uh, this functor taken Z is uh, left exact. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yes, it's enough to check on generalized while modules. All right. And then maybe there is Google. Um, I mean, the product of generalized while modules is, you know, in general, going to be something complicated. But... Um, yeah. So maybe you could uh, add uh, this discussion to the notes. 
Okay, I will. Okay. Uh, okay, let's then um, continue with right now. So now I've defined this um, uh, tensor product, and I just want to prove that in fact uh, the statement that I made before is satisfied. So that the uh, homes from some test object X to the dual of the tensor product. S in S minus S zero. So this this dual of the tensor product is just W um, equals the covariance of X vs theta S dual. Um, right. And yeah, but let me just say for X. And VS here in O kappa. And this probably you need O kappa. Well, I think certainly because you want this to be finite dimensional. Right. And I think it's kind of along the lines of the proof of this. You can also show that D of W is well defined. Mm. Fair enough. Well, I mean, uh, D of W, well, okay, W is, uh, so let's see. Uh, w is in Kardang Lustig. Mm -hmm. So it's an end object of category O. So DW is going to be a pro object. And then to tell that it's in category O, you need to have something like home suffering a dimensional and maybe so. Uh, so if that's enough, then it follows from this. And find well, some, some that, that you don't have homes from a while module large enough, but then when you compute covariance, if you you know if you have if you fix uh, k minus one spaces in the just while module and you take the other representation very big, then you're mm -hmm. not going to have any covariance. So in order for covariance to be non empty, uh, non zero, you need that yes. the last module has some okay. common summons with the tensor uh, product of the first k minus one. Right, right, right. So it's, yeah, it's uh, not, not, not only is it finite dimensional, but it's somehow stabilized. Like yeah, high so enough it vanishes on the uh, while modules with uh, large enough highest weight. And uh, again, this probably follows from this if you do it for generalized um, bound modules, mm -hmm. because we know how to compute. Right, so maybe that's the proof. I, I guess I'll add it to the notes, but. Um. Right, and at some point it would be good to make a break. Um, yes, I agree. Uh, okay, I was trying to finish. Uh, I have two more pages to finish the construction of tensor products and these properties. So maybe I can include that and then we'll go to. Well, uh, other well let, let's make a break now until, okay. I don't know, five. Sure. Oh, oh. Meanwhile, do people have questions? On the right hand side, do you mean X and then lots of VS? Uh, right, yeah. S here is an S minus S zero, and S here is an S. Yeah. So yeah, but both sets have the size of S.
is is demonoidal. Uh, the duality functor. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, but it reverses the tensor product. This will be this is true. Like this will be a rigid monoidal category, and mm -hmm. the D will be the dual, like the dual, and duals, uh, yeah, always reverse oh, the yeah, tensor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, reversing the tensor product doesn't change the module. Like, it's isomorphic, but because it's separated. And we are working on P1 because it's easier or it's. Um, I think you can do it in more general curves, but it's probably more complicated. I mean, I think here we're using things, definitely using things about P1, but maybe, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know with like more complicated approaches. So this, yes, there's more modern approaches to this kind of stuff, using factorization stuff and nonsense like this. And maybe um, with that, you can do it in more general curves, but the easy approach is MP1. So. People. Well, I mean, people uh, have been studying conformal blocks on modular curves for quite a while. There you go. You still have an e equivalent? Well, maybe I'm spoiling. Something. So the, no, the equivalent is of the local object. Like oh. the equivalence is of uh, um, O kappa as a tensor product with as a, ten a monoidal category with the representation of the quantum group. Like it's just the global is just used in the middle in order to define the tensor product. Uh, but the category right. itself is a local thing. Right. So if it's not on P1, you might have structures more than braiding I mean, because I don't know if you can do anything on other curves that really. I, well, well, you just move points yeah, around. Like some... A priori, a priori, if you had some functor that represents some sort of co-invariance on other curves, you would have some representation. Like you would have a local system on copies of this curve away from the diagonals. So this would be not a representation of a braid group, like in this case, but a representation of a more complicated pi one. I don't know if that's actually what you get. I don't know. Well, okay. So I would really like to know because maybe this somehow relates to my work. So if anyone knows, please let me know. It will be very helpful. Thanks. Or maybe do you know any paper that deals with uh, general curves? Well, I mean, you can Google conformal blocks or conformal that's, blocks from a finite algebra. That's what this is about. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You know, what it gives you, you'll get some, you know, Vector bundle is a flat connection of, uh, I guess, any curve by technical invariance. I mean, but on P1, you you get the, the usual braided structure. I'm wondering if you get something well, else. Well, I mean, you get a vector bundle with a flat connection. Whatever fundamental group is, it will act on a fiber. Right, but how does the braided structure get generalized? Well, the connection of the fundamental group of a suitable, you know, suitable space. Oh. Okay, I see. Hmm. 
So let's try to resume. Okay. So let's get to okay. Let's continue then. Um, okay. Right. So the we wanted to prove this this uh, statement about the properties of this um, uh, tensor product that we've just um, defined, and the first point is right as I said, uh, the harm from this x to the dual of this tensor product just by definition the harm from g hat kappa from x to w um, and now uh, right the next statement that we need to check is that the harm g whoops hat kappa W is equal to harm of gamma from X to W. And so this is uh, my smoothness, basically. So this is uh, an analogous statement to um, um, saying that um, the representation, if, if you have um, elements in O kappa, then the homs uh, computed as representations of G hat or G tilde are the same. Uh, so this is exactly the same um, statement because um, this GM acts no potently or this QN uh, acts um, uh, no potently. The um, completing, looking at the local or the global picture doesn't actually give you any extra information of the homes. So we can reduce to this algebra gamma. Um, and then uh, another point is that uh, the homes from X to W is the same as the homes from X to Z to so just this dual without the taking some um, subalgebra. And this uh, uh, follows uh, by noting that for every element, for every um, element y and x, there exists some n such that g n of y equals zero. And so any map uh, between x and z is just going to land on w because it's going to send y uh, being killed by g n to some element that's also being killed by g n, uh, which yeah, by definition hence lies in w. Um, Okay, and so uh, right. um, this Z is by definition defined as some uh, hom from something to something. So hom gamma of X Z is just equal of, to hom X hom Z to C. And this is equal by adjunction to hon gamma of x. Oh, sorry, not z. Uh, tensor product of the s. And so by adjunction, this is just tensor product over gamma of x uh, with uh, the s. And now here, note, so right. Um, Right, yeah, here note that X is something living on S0 and um, uh, right, and these tensor product of VSs is uh, something um, living away from S0, so on S minus S0. Um, and because of this property that the um, residue adds up to uh, zero, this residue at all the points in P1 add up to zero, and the fact that the level at X and these VSs um, is the same. This uh, tensor product actually is a representation factors is a representation of this algebra G out the, the outer uh, algebra G out S. Um, and then uh, right, the last point is just noting that by definition, uh, this uh, home here is given by the dual of the co-invariance. Uh, 
And so this um, finishes the proof of this property. Um, yeah, any questions uh, about this proof? So yeah, the, the, basically maybe the thing that I say is um, just by construction of this uh, module, there's nothing much to say. There's uh, other constructions of this uh, tensor product uh, in terms of some limits or something like this, which construct more directly the tensor product and not the dual of the tensor product. But with this definition, um, so the dual of the tensor product, every like the, the fact that this uh, represents this co-invariant functor is basically there's nothing there's not much to say it just follows clearly um okay and yeah maybe let's say so this um right just in order to compute something easy, but um, is that this tensor product, we know we know how to compute this tensor product in the case for a generic, oh, sorry. Uh, if, if we have uh, bar modules um, NS kappa at a generic level, um, then this is just gonna be the um, uh, bar module of the tensor product. But as I say, this is just for generic uh, level and ns in rho t and generic means irrational yes um okay and the proof of this uh well here really what we are uh using is that uh well yeah, I, I don't know if we uh, checked this last time, but um, hum of n s kappa, or well, I guess this follows from what I just said. Uh, this can be computed by covariance as the covariance of n s kappa and n s kappa. Yes, this is the case of the tensor product with just one um, element, dual, and this is one dimensional. And uh, NS kappa, for if, N, if for NS, yeah, sorry, this is one dimensional if NS is reducible. So. But don't you need to pass to some duality at some point? So this duality yeah, yeah. didn't so, fix simples. What? Duality this duality function didn't fix simples. Yes. So there's going to be some. Uh, ah, sorry. You mean yes here. Um, okay. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you're you're right. Correct. Uh, let me say this. Is that clear? Can you read this? Well. Uh, Should I write it again? Yes. Yes. And as dual. Capital. Yes. Uh, and then, yes, here. So maybe a, a remark for the audience is that uh, you can modify the duality so that it will fix all simples. You essentially need to twist the sum uh, automorphism of your D algebra. But if you don't want to do it, then you, you need to do. It. Yes. Um, but let me just for NS simple. Uh, this uh, n s kappa also simple, uh, and this uh, is one dimensional. Um, and right, and so this gives us some some uh, map between two um, um, irreducible objects, and hence a non-zero map between two irreducible objects, and so it gives us some isomorphism. Uh, that the dual of n s kappa is uh, n s dual kappa, and uh, we can just do this for every irreducible uh, summand since the category at an irrational level is semi-simple, 
and so uh, the result is true. So this hasn't been mentioned. Maybe you can write it as a remark that one call is rational, then the category is semi simple. Uh, Direction. I mean, this follows uh, oh, cap. Simple. This follows from looking at the L zero at the um, um, uh, um, eigenvalues of L zero. Um, basically, no difference between two possible eigenvalues is integral, and so we saw from the previous um, talk that then there can't be any maps between um, well modules um okay so this uh so we have this and then right so we can freely change between duals and like the duals we can move inside and so we can just then see that on x to the tensor product of n s kappa equals home X to the dual of the tensor product of MS dual kappa. Um, sorry, two kappa is here, and then um, uh, right. So this this step is saying just that uh, we can uh, right. The, the duality isn't uh, right. The, the, the duality, it, it, what? yeah, the duality acts in the simple way here. And this is just uh, the covariance between X and, sorry, no, I got confused. Um, Okay, I want X also kappa. Um, and this is the home, sorry, I think I just took X to tensor NS. Okay, maybe I need to uh, write this better, but um, yeah, basically what we want is uh, to say that the, the functions between X kappa and um, tensor NS kappa is the same as just the, um, uh, humps between the X and tensor NS, um, and then um, say that the induction functor here is also an isomorphism, and so relates this tensor of NS kappa with tensor of NS kappa. Uh, but maybe I haven't said this too well, so I'll write it better in the notes. Um, okay, but this is just a um, um, brief remark that I wanted to make, is that the tensor product here is uh, right, somewhat understandable at the irrational level, but it's very complicated at the rational level. Like, um, it's not going to be right. It, it, you can you can even still have um, irreducible uh, NS kappa as irreducible vial modules, and their tensor product is going to be some complicated um, extension, like not some some um, non-trivial extension of symbols. So. You know. But what's true is that if you uh, use if you take the tensor product of two vial modules. Then the result has a filtration by while modules. I will, I will, I will, I will state this. So, okay, good. Thank you for uh, going ahead of the talk. Um, uh, okay, but then, uh, yeah, let me state a theorem, even though I'm not going to uh, prove it. I'm just going to make some remarks about it. So, uh, for kappa not causative rational, uh, the category uh, O kappa uh, with this tensor product is a rigid graded monoidal category. And so the proof, I'm going to omit it because it's very long. 
but let me um, make some remarks. So, uh, right. So as I said uh, about the braiding, um, yeah, to understand the braiding, um, we can consider um, this covariance, this covariance, the S theta S as S varies. Um, and uh, right, so basically what we can construct is some um, uh, D module such that this is going to be the flat, the flat sections. Um, and so, right, let me just say this, this is going to then glue. So this, uh, well, let me say gives uh, a local system. on uh, P1 times S whoops, minus the diagonals, right? The points, the points need to be different. And so that's a way of, away from all the diagonals with any two points clash. We have this um, local system. And so if we fix, if we fix uh, S0 to be equal to infinity, uh, and let s minus s zero vary. Uh, then uh, the tensor product, or really the dual of the tensor product, I guess, uh, is going to represent a you know well, uh, the the fiber really uh, the fiber of the local system. Um, on A1 uh, to the S minus the diagonals. And it follows from this, that monodromy gives a braiding on this category. Um, yeah, let me just say this, and then um, uh, maybe also say that the the um, the D modules, the differential equations that appear um, in the um, D module with this uh, flat sections, are very interesting, and there's a lot to say. But I definitely don't have time to say any of this. But um, uh, some gamma functions will appear later on, and this are the gamma functions appear because uh, hypergeometric. Um, functions appear uh, related to the the braiding of this uh, category and the D module um, that appears here, and so this is about the braiding part. But there's also some statement about uh, rigidity, and uh, let me just say that so this condition that kappa is not positive rational is required uh, for rigidity. Um, again, we're going to um, skip the proof, but maybe some very vague ideas. It's um, basically you just uh, reduce it to checking uh, rigidity of the um, VAL modules. And uh, to check rigidity of VAL modules, again, using the tensor product, you uh, reduce it to the rigidity of small enough uh, um, uh, VAL modules. And uh, for this small enough, you need that these small enough val modules are uh, irreducible. And you can ensure that if kappa is not positive rational, but not uh, otherwise. So that's the very brief idea of the proof. But yes, I don't. When, so yes. in the last talk, if I remember correctly, this assumption is made because we want to prove that all generalized well module has finite length. Yes. So this is like the, the say the, the right, you, you want that the VAL modules for some small enough character or something like this are irreducible. And this is not oh. true for 
Okay. Uh, well, well, I don't know if it's not true, but it's not. Like, well, I mean, the wild modules have infinite length. There you go. Yeah. For for the differential, and so the duality here is just d. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Uh... So being rigid means that there is a duality function. That's the duality function. Um, right. Yeah. You, you need a duality, but then you need evaluations and co-evaluation maps and things like this. And to uh, construct this, uh, right, it's easy to define it uh, for simple um, objects in like a similar way, you know, as I do here. Well, as I failed to do here. Um, but uh, right, in a similar way uh, to that. And then uh, use uh, that if you construct it for some module, then you can construct it for, ten for tensor products. And then maybe you can construct it also for um, sub quotients and things like this. So that's the, um, the idea. But you need that small enough bound modules are irreducible. And that's where. Well, so does this, does this uh, rigid braided structure gives a. Uh, Quasi triangular half algebra structure on. Yes, it's called on uh, G kappa uh, hat. Uh, yeah, I, I mean the the uh, um, quasi triangular half algebra that you get is the Lustig quantum group. That's the whole point in this discussion. You mean you mean G kappa hat with that structure is called the Lustig quantum group? Like the uh, O cap O kappa the category O kappa is equivalent. As a braided monoidal category, uh, this is equivalent to representations of the quantum group, so the Lustig quantum group at some particular Q. That's dependent on this kappa. No, no, I mean, does this even give a half algebra structure on G kappa head? Not the quantum group. I mean, this is not the. Like, this is not the, the tensor. Yeah, th this is not the tensor product that comes from a Hopf algebra step. Like, yes, it's it's not a ten like this. The forgetful functor is not a uh, 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 fiber functor. Like, it's not the tensor oh. product of these. Like this tensor. That's why it's called tensor with the dot. That's fleeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not the usual tensor product. And an easy way to say to say this is what when you turn the two modules over a fine the algebra, their levels will add together. And here we want uh, to have the same level as before. So this cannot be a naive tensor product. Also, presumably the like naive tensor product is commutative or you know symmetric. Also true. That's also correct. And gives very big modules because you turn to something infinite dimensional. Yes, but yeah, this rigid braided monoidal category is going to have an underlying Hopf algebra that this is the uh, representations of, and that Hopf algebra is the Lustig quantum. Any other questions about this? Okay, so um, then let me start the third part in the equivalence, and let's start with constructing a functor from O kappa to UQ uh, modules to the Lustig quantum group module. And uh, right, I want to start first with um, some vague idea of what's going on, and then try to go into the details. I'm not going to go through all the details because there's a lot of checking of many relations that I don't think is too um, illuminating. But I want to um, right give the basic idea of the um, of the proof today, and then see how far we get with some of the details. So yeah, um, first I just want to um, introduce notation. So v uh, sub lambda is uh, the irreducible. Uh, uh, representations of, of, of the finitely algebra uh, of highest weight 
a weight lambda. And we're going to denote, uh, because we're going to need the duals, uh, we're going to denote by V lambda bar the uh, irreducible corresponding to the dual of V lambda. Um, OK. So right. Here's the, the general idea, sort of, yeah, the general idea in the case of uh, G representation, what would this look like? And a, a similar analysis, I guess, can be made for the quantum group. But um, so if we have V, a finite dimensional represent, uh, G representation, G representation, then how can we try to find the, the uh, weight spaces um, just if, if we just know the category and don't know the underlying um, uh, vector spaces, how can we recover the um, weight spaces? Well, uh, then for, for choice lambda that's big enough and a fixed new, uh, consider the maps from V lambda bar tensor V lambda plus nu to this um, representation V. So um, by a junction, we can move V to the other side, adding some dual plus nu tensor V dual C. And then um, here's where, uh, yeah, the lambda big enough um, is required is that if we tensor uh, some representation with a big enough uh, irreducible, we are, we know how this uh, module breaks up. Namely, it breaks up in the, well, yeah, let me just write it down maybe and then explain. So um, the dual mu uh, C, so it, it breaks up as the sum, right, so I'm gonna, find a decomposition of the tensor product of this V lambda plus nu tensor um, uh, V lambda in terms of irreducibles. And it's going to break up as the sum of irreducibles lambda plus uh, uh, nu plus mu, uh, at where mu is going to run over all the weights appearing in V dual. And with the multiplicity, uh, the, the weight space, so this V uh, uh, dual uh, upper mu in brackets, is going to denote, so here, V, or let me say, for a general, for a representation W, W mu is the mu weight space of W in G. Um, right, and so uh, oh, yeah, finite dimensional, whatever. Um, right, and so once we have this um, decomposition, we can move uh, uh, things around, or uh, maybe well, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let me say so. This is just the sum sum over mu of hom g. So we can move this v lambda to the other side. And then get, and also the dual, uh, this dual vector space to the other side, and then get v not dual mu tensor v lambda. Um, and now, because these are irreducible, there's only a non trivial map when uh, lambda equals lambda plus nu plus mu. Uh, so this is going to be v of minus mu, I guess. Ah, sorry, no. Uh, there's a problem, of course. The mu weight space of V dual is the minus mu weight space of V, or the dual of the minus mu weight space of V. And so, so uh, I'm going to get V nu. Um, OK, so the, the bottom line of this um, uh, of this discussion is that we can understand the weight spaces of V 
by uh, considering maps out of modules of tensor products like this, where lambda is large. And uh, so I've made this computation for G modules, but a similar um, thing is true for uh, quantum groups, for, uh, right, for a quantum group. And so we can recover the weight spaces um, by just, if we just but know- for the, the quantum group, you will need this category to, to be semi-simple for this argument. So for the argument, the way the way that I've stated it, correct. But uh, in the limit, we're still going to like right. For for the argument, you need the semi simplicity. But in order to recover the weight space as homs like this, you don't. Uh, but yes, the argument maybe it's more complicated. And uh, but you need to take uh, what you need to take uh, v lambdas uh, replace v lambdas with uh, while modules for the quantum. Right, right, yeah, yeah, of course, yes, yes, mm -hmm. correct. Um, yes, yes, of course. Um, right, but so what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we want we want some equivalence between uh, O kappa and the representations of the quantum group, where the val modules will correspond. The val modules of O kappa will go to the val modules of uh, the quantum group, and so we're just going to. Um, uh, mimic this this uh, argument. So we're going to take functions or uh, homs from the tensor product of uh, uh, val, mo val module for lambda uh, bar and a val module for lambda plus nu, and let lambda go to infinity, which is going to be uh, need some some discussion. Um, right, but take take the limit as lambda goes goes to infinity, and consider the homs from a tensor product like this to v. And what this will recover is the, the corresponding weight space. And so um, this is going to give us a construction, um, uh, a functor that maps, uh, uh, right, in, in this case, uh, representations of uh, G to the underlying graded representation uh, or graded vector space, sorry. Um, so this recovers the graded uh, vector space. And the only thing that now uh, remains is the operators EI and FI. So then, um uh so right so in the category we will min mimic wait, wait, wait. sorry i'm yes. i'm really confused so now we are so going, this is uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so so now we are uh, coming from the category o and then we want to go to rep of u uq or the other way right. around no no we we're, we're starting from uh, a representation of um uh uh um, of uh, the category O kappa, and then we'll construct a, an element of rep UQ. But the, the point of this discussion is saying, if you just have the category, but don't like right, don't know the underlying vector space, how do you recover the weight spaces just by knowing stuff about the maps in the category? So you just know the category is an abstract object. How do you recover, mm -hmm. um, say, the, the weight spaces? And the point is you can recover the weight spaces by considering maps from um, tensor product of volume modules like this when lambda goes to infinity. So maybe uh, some uh, a little bit of discussion is in order. So there is something yes. called Tanakian formalism. Yes. And what is it doing? It tells you that uh, you know if you have a so kind of Hopf algebras, let's say over well, well, well Hopf algebras give you uh, categories of modules which are rigid monoidal categories. And how can we recover this Hopf algebra, the Hopf algebra from the category? Well, we cannot just do it from the category itself. We need a fiber functor, which is uh, for, 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 if you know that this is a category of Hopf algebra, there is a uh, category of modules over Hopf algebra, there is a distinguished functor to the category of vector spaces, which is a forgetful one. So now we have got a braided monoidal category, uh, which is this Cardanglisti category or category O kappa. And we want to establish an equivalence with the representations of a certain Hopf algebra. For this, we need to have a fiber functor. We need to have a functor to the category of vector spaces, which will respect the monoidal uh, structure. And uh, Pablo explains how we are going to construct this factor. Yes. And in fact, not like it's not just going to go to um, vector spaces, but to graded vector spaces, just basically for for free. Um, and then 
if you wanted to vector space, you just add all, all these um, uh, functors, right? And um, right, so it's, yeah, so uh, let me just say, so we will use this construction uh, to give a graded, graded vector space x of v for v in o kappa and then following the the um the paper by kasha and elastic uh we're gonna uh construct uh and then construct uh operators e i f i um again yeah yeah, so uh, what what we're going to do to construct EI and FI is um, construct maps between these uh, tensor products of biomodules, uh, which will then induce maps between these uh, different uh, uh, weight spaces, right? EI and FI are going to change the weight space, um, right? And um, that are going to give us these, right? Uh, with using these uh, maps of tensor products of biomodules, we're going to construct these operators EI and FI. And then I guess the, the proof of Nkash and elastic just checks relations of EIs and FIs um, and says that they're the uh, relations of um, the quantum group. Um, and I'm gonna right, try to skip uh, as much of that of those details as possible because they're not particularly uh, illuminating, but um, yeah. Uh, maybe the, the the important point to understand is what 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 the idea here is is that we're trying to recover the underlying weight the underlying vector space um uh, to construct uh, yeah if you want uh, uh, the fiber functor and to do this we can uh, do this directly from the, the category by understanding uh, these homs from tensor product of uh, bar modules as lambda goes to infinity with some sort of limit Okay, any questions about the ideas? So, and the construction somehow guarantees that checking relations is sufficient for Q generic. Uh, correct, yes. Uh, I mean, somehow I will... for, for the Lustig quantum groups, there is a whole lot more so this is, uh, yeah. generators. This will be the second, the second point that, uh, uh, yeah, maybe, well, um, yeah, it was, yeah, I'll start next slide then, um, is that, uh, uh, the second part of the argument. So this, the first part is this constructing this map graded uh, vector space, but uh, the right the the second point is how do we construct this for the for um, roots of unity for this rational elements? And to do this, basically we're going to do some sort of well, if you want li limiting procedure or something it's like we're going to construct it for instead of a fixed kappa. We're going to have a varying kappa, so we're going to map kappa to some ring of uh, to some ring, and then specialize this ring at different points. And for most of the points, um, it's going to be the right the the um, uh, semi simple category when kappa uh, specializes to something irrational. And then, in order to get information about kappa rational, we need to prove some statements about flatness or something like this in order to say that sort of we can extend uh, some maps that we have uh, at the generic point to this um, particular uh, point. And then, right, we'll construct EIs and FIs at these rational points like this. And then to uh, construct the divided powers, we will just see that uh, over this ring, they are divisible, the, the powers of EI are divisible by these uh, uh, n factorial quantum n factorial functions. Um, and so this gives us also operators once we specialize at the um, root of unity. So that's the general uh, idea, but let me maybe write something. Well, we only, uh, so we, we, to define this functor, we will only define on the wall modules because of semi-simplicity. So, so, no, so like the functor, this functor, uh, is going to work in general. Like something like this is going to work in general. It's just no, but v is a five-dimensional G-wrap. Well, so this is 
So this is just the idea, like the oh, we're gonna oh, replace, see, yeah. yeah, we're gonna replace uh -huh, B lambda uh -huh, by some uh, vial module in O kappa, and this by another vial module in O kappa, and B is gonna be any element in 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 O kappa, and okay, this is gonna okay. give us some uh, functor degraded um, vector spaces, um, right? But somehow, right, things are gonna be easy to check at generic uh, uh, points, and then to construct anything at the special points, we're just gonna yeah argue by some some sort of flatness over the spring, uh, some sort of flatness properties over the spring or something like that. By the way, uh, this discussion of uh, Qs and Kappas is, is difficult to follow if one doesn't know a formula which connects the two. Yeah, so I uh, will uh, say it later, but I guess I can uh, write it somewhere. So here, right, from O Kappa to U Q mod, where Q, equals e to the minus pi i over kappa. Which doesn't make sense as stated because currently kappa is a two form. Yeah, OK. Yes, so but the point is that there is a distinguished choice, and then we kind yes. of take the ratio. Correct. Uh, the distinguished choice is this normalization to critical level, so that 0 is a critical level. But um, yes, let me just abuse. Yeah, for, from now on, Kappa is just going to be a number uh, with this normalization. Um, or okay. can you say it more explicitly? So, right. So there's a, a one dimensional. Uh, yes. Right. And kappa at zero is going to be the critical level. And the rational points are going to be the interesting ones. So I think this fixes. Uh, what is kappa at zero? This number kappa is going to correspond to the critical level O kappa. Right, like this is, you know, the, the, the choices of uh, kappa is, uh, you know, a complex number's worth of choices. And, in, you know, we, we just need to fix like the center and some scaling or something like this. So the center is it? the critical level, and the scaling is the rationals are the interesting ones, or something like that. Oh, OK, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then kappa would be a rational number? No, kappa is, a, 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 in general, a complex number. But the only, well, that, let's say, yeah. Oh, OK, yeah. OK. I mean, in general, complex number. Okay. Um, right. So, um, right. So, so yeah. So let, let me say what I was saying about this. Uh, so, uh, we uh, will consider uh, G hat kappa modules over ring R over R the ring of analytic functions on C, meromorphic at infinity. Um, uh, right, so, uh, and, and the point is somehow uh, the this G kappa modules are uh, and you know, you usually need it to uh, specialize the, the kappa one to be some element of the complex numbers. But uh, we can instead act on R modules uh, where we specialize this, uh, you know, this kappa to just be the function, you know, X, um, the, the, right. Um, uh, right, so so uh, you can consider modules over this ring R, and then um, it, the we can construct the val the val modules and all these uh, um, modules that we um, understand, and then when we specialize this uh, ring R at kappa equals to some uh, irrational uh, uh, value, then the category is going to become uh, semi simple, and we're going to understand everything. And so this is going to give us information about uh, homes uh, over R at particular points. And then the flatness is going to tell us that um, 
uh, something about the, the rational ones. Um, okay, and then the other uh, point, well, let me see where I should. Okay, maybe let me see if I can speak the following. Maybe then. Um, okay, and then uh, we're also going to use uh, the following functor, uh, g of v, which is going to be v modulo q1 hashtag. Like this, this is the um, um, automorphism of g uh, um, of g hat of g uh, tilde. Sorry. So this q1 is really just uh, uh, spanned by products, you know, of the form t minus k1 x1 t minus kr xr. Um, uh, right. So this is some uh, right, some some um, uh, Functor that on uh, some val module is just going to return back the um, the finite dimensional representation that we're inducing, um, and right, it, it will just be convenient uh, to relate these maps back to these finite dimensional G representations. Um, okay, so with this we can state some uh, proposition, some results, and uh, so the first one is the, well, it doesn't, you don't need to, uh, is the comment that, uh, Ivan made a little bit ago is that the product, the tensor product of two, uh, bar modules, uh, has a filtration, uh, by bar modules. So I think I'll skip the proof of that one, but maybe I'll do the proof of the other. So B uh, for V a module with a valve filtration a right. No, let me say. Uh, Valve filtration over this ring R. So, right, this this V module is now an, a module over R, and it is a filtration by valve modules that are all right, flat over R. And uh, uh, and W uh, uh, some G K representation. Uh, of the same level, let's see. Now the level is an element of R, not an element of uh, C. Um, then, um, at capital V W, oops, is flat over R. So this is the flatness that we're going to use uh, over and over to understand things, some homes like this by understanding, well, right, we're going to understand homes from tensor products like this. And this is a valve filtration. Um, and so the homes are going to be flat um, uh, over R and we're going to uh, understand them at the generic point and then say, well, we know the rank at the special point because of flatness. Pablo, um, I'm suspicious of the statement. I believe it when W is going to have a dual vial filtration. Otherwise, I don't believe it. Uh, yes, I can check, but I think, I mean, we need it. Well, okay, so let's, let's okay, so let's consider category of SL2. Ah, right? no, it has uh, two uh, standard modules. And they're going to have home between them at positive integral parameters. Mm -hmm. right? And from an integral para for, for integral central uh, characters. For my integral central characters, runoff forms. 
right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So there is no flatness. Okay, I need to think, but I mean, we'll definitely need this for W having vial filtration. Not well, dual vial filtration. filtration. No. Yeah, so, because uh, I, I mean, I understand. I understand your point. Like, I understand your point, but uh, maybe there is duality missing somewhere. But uh, a well-behaved object is a home from uh, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. To dual well no, no, I, I understand that point. Uh, but All right, maybe okay. this can be addressed in the notes. Correct. Um, okay, so let me uh, let's state this before we finish. Uh, so then the functor G is exact on the subcategory on the ex you know exact subcategory of uh, V in O kappa with vial filtration. So it sends exact sequences such that all the elements have vial filtration to exact sequences. So that I understand. So we are essentially taking variants for the action of uh, like the, the negative, negative part. part. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and then uh, V in O has a vial filtration. If and only if X1 lambda kappa equals zero for every lambda. Uh, okay, I don't know if I really have time to prove things. I mean, I can finish now and prove next time or? Well, let's, uh, okay, so next, uh, okay, so how much uh, stuff do you have? Uh, several pages. Uh, one, so two, uh, less or equals than one hour. Uh, I think slightly more. Well, it's, okay. uh, like, uh, so today I covered, I think, 15 of my pages in the notes, and there's uh, 10, 11 left. So it's slightly less than. Slightly more than half. I mean, considerably more than half. Well, uh, okay. So maybe uh, we can do this. Uh, so we can. Okay. Uh, so do people have questions? And don't leave because there will be a discussion of when the next time happens. Well, just to make sure, a valve restriction is a restriction with quotients of well modules. Uh, a vial filtration is a filtration uh, with, like, a filtration is associated gradient or vial modules or assembly modules. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So every generalized vial module we know has a vial filtration. Sure. For this last step where you're like going to the uh, the kind of special days, is it enough? Uh, to show kind of what you're showing in this last slide, is it enough just to do it for tilting objects? Or do you uh, have like this whole category of, of vial filtered? Well, tiltings so, are definitely vial filtered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, but they're a much smaller category, right? I don't think so. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, at the end of the day, when, when the uh, Equivalence, when the equivalence is proven, you just need uh, to check, uh, to understand the homes at tiltings or projectives. Or, um, but, the, um, but in between, you need to, in order to construct this e, uh, EI, you need to understand uh, uh, maps between uh, some vial module and a tensor product of vial modules. Uh, basically, like some, some 
right? Some uh, function like you're going to construct functions like from v lambda plus nu minus alpha i to v lambda to insert kappa everywhere. V nu. Um, right. And the fact that this is sort of changing here, the degree by alpha i is going to um, give you the, the EIs and the FIs changing degrees by alpha i. Um, but yeah, this has a filtration by vial modules. So that's why I'm slightly confused now. But yeah, I'll try to go over and check. But yeah. What we need is functions like this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in, in, in the last step when you prove equivalence, which you're gonna basically say that a function between braided, mono, a functor between a monoidal functor between braid, rigid braided monoidal categories is always faithful. And so uh, it, it reduces to checking in um, the same dimension for a generating set and the generating set is gonna be tiltings. Um, and there you can right compute compute it at generic values, and then by flatness, you know everything. And at generic values, it's clear. So, um, yeah, that, that that's the proof. I'm done. Uh, but, uh, well, I mean, for tiltings, you definitely have flatness of holes. Right, right. But but uh, in the middle, in order to construct these EIs, you need to construct functions like this, and that's why I'm slightly confused. Well, I mean, it may be not so bad because uh, kind of. Well, if you consider the category of all modules where you know weights are less or equal than lambda plus nu, mm -hmm. then v lambda plus nu is going to be projective there, and maybe v lambda plus uh, nu minus alpha i is not that far from being a projective or something like that. I mean, but something needs to be said certain, because this yeah. is kind of a priori not guaranteed. It's certainly not projective because. The whole point is there's some interesting extension between lambda plus nu minus alpha i and lambda plus nu. Like, sure. yeah, surjecting to lambda. Um, but, uh, yes, okay. you certainly want flatness of those maps. Like, you want the set of maps like this uh, to be flat. OK. So, well, I mean, there is this example you, you, you could try to think about the example of category O. For SL2. Yes. Uh, which kind of, you know. Um, I mean, they, they state some flatness like this, so I'll check the way that they state it. Okay. All right. So, uh, are there any further questions? So, can you repeat? So, once we have flatness and we know what happens generically, what general consequence can we make? Or general results can we know about the special points? So uh, then the, right, as I said, so in, in for the equivalent, what your equivalence, what you're gonna do is you're gonna check it's a functor of braided monoidal categories, and this is gonna imply a rigid braided monoidal categories, and this is gonna imply that it's faithful. Um, and so uh, in order to prove an equivalence, you just need on a generating set of projectives, for example, to check that the uh, dimensions are the same uh, before and after applying the functor. Because since it's faithful, if the dimensions are the same, then in fact, uh, it's, it's fully faithful on these objects. And because these objects are projective and generate, this is enough to say every, everything's fully faithful. Right. And in order to compute the dimension of these um, uh, homes between um, these projectives, you're like, you're just going to construct projectives that are of the form tensor products of vial modules. And in order to com construct the co compute the dimension of this by flatness, you can say that everything reduces to uh, the generic thing. Uh, the rank of, uh, is the same as just the, the dimension of the generic thing. And at the generic thing, this just reduces to the computation of uh, homes between tensor products of um, irreducible representations in G or something like this. Like it's an easy number to. Yeah. Oh, I see. Mm, thank you. Yeah. 